are here in front of the immigration facility in Englewood, Colorado. Uh, what is your name? Jim Harlan. Jim Harlan. Jim, why are you here? Because I have to be. This is a, a real injustice to separate families, to take the parents away from the kids and the kids away from the parents. Uh, it's, it, it just, it's ridiculous that, that our government is involved in that. And there seem to, seems to be a disconnect. Our leaders say that they're not going to deport anyone that is uh, a law-abiding citizen and who is not a, a criminal, but uh, they deport a 1,000 a day, uh, and 90 percent of those people have, have no criminal record at all. So somewhere there's a disconnect. They say that they're going to do one thing, and, and then now they're obviously doing something else. So we're, we're here objecting to that. Why shouldn't they deport people who have come here without documents? Well, you can get into a legal discussion if you want to, but uh, uh, the uh, people from Latin America that have come to the United States are law-abiding citizens, and uh, at uh, various times in our past, we've welcomed them, uh, thinking that, uh, yes, indeed, we, we need the, the help and we need the labor, and now, 20 years later, uh, 15 years later, uh, we don't need the labor as much, and... Uh, so it's, uh, it's time to deport them. That's not fair. So really, it's an issue of fairness that we're speaking about right now. Are there benefits to the U.S. citizens for immigrants to stay here? Well, there's certainly a lot of work that's being done that uh, wouldn't, uh, it would be difficult to replace if, if they weren't here. Uh, I read about uh, uh, a farmer in Alabama last year where they uh, wouldn't, they clamped down on uh, immigrant labor, and uh, he wasn't able to get his crops uh, harvested. He put ads in the paper, and people would come and work for a day, and it was the work was too hard. They wouldn't do it. So it's uh, uh, there's a lot of work that's being done that would we would have a hard time replacing them. Great. And what organ what organization do you represent? Uh, I go to church at the First Unitarian. Uh, Church of uh, Denver, and uh, uh, it's officially called, I guess, the First Unitarian Society of Denver. And uh, and I'm a, I work with AFSC, uh, Americans Friends Society. If a person wanted to get involved, is there how would they get involved? Well, uh, you can through the, our church, or you could uh, certainly AFSC. There are numerous ways that you can become involved with uh, with them. All you have to do is call their office. Okay, well, thank you for the interview. Okay. Well, as you've heard, uh, we have English-speaking U.S. citizens that are right here standing in defense of immigrants. Uh, I think we will find that immigrants provide a lot of benefits to the U.S. Uh, they, have, they take a lot of low-paying jobs, but they also have a lot of hopes and dreams for this country. So let's interview a few more people and see what they say. Okay, we're standing in front of the Immigration Center in Englewood, Colorado, and I have a young lady young, uh, who is here for some reason. Can you tell me why you're here? Uh, I'm here because I know Arturo, and I and feel who, for who him. Who is Arturo? And Arturo is in sanctuary now at First Unitarian Church in Denver and has been given orders uh, to be deported, and we're trying to reverse that. What is sanctuary? <laughs> Sanctuary is uh, a new, the new sanctuary movement um, is a replay of what uh, we used to do back in the 80s when people were escaping um, the dangers of Latin America and coming to America. And if they found sanctuary in a church, um, traditionally over hundreds of years that has been the safe place for them so the government will not cross the church doors uh, to take him in custody uh, and send him back to his country of origin well that's really that's really heavy and i noticed that the majority of people here are are not latino we're used to seeing large groups of latinos marching and chanting why are you here? Are you Latino? 
No, I'm not Latino. Um, but like everybody in America, I'm an immigrant. And uh, I believe in uh, the beauty of moving to support your family and looking for what's best for your family. And that's what Arturo has done. And as a neighbor to Mexico, I think we should have a special relationship to help our neighbors. So do you find that uh, Mexico is kind of a buffer country for the security of the U.S.? Could we say that? Uh, I hadn't thought of it that way. I don't think of it that way, actually. Um, you know. Well, what would happen if uh, Russia or China started putting bases in Mexico? <laughs> Well, we went through that with uh, Cuba, and, uh, of course, the reaction in these days, um, I think the reaction to that would be uh, very serious. So, so, so it kind of makes sense that we start taking care of our southern neighbor then. That's a very good point. <laughs> okay, what is your name? Angie Barnes. Angie Barnes. Okay, and you give us uh, permission to do the interview? Sure. Okay. And what Whatever helps. Well, I don't represent any organization per se, but I am a member of the First Unitarian Society uh, of Denver and also have been closely associated with American Friends Service Committee over the last several years. Okay. Thank you. So we've heard from Angie, who is talking about the importance to take care of our neighbors. Also, the natural sense for every immigrant, for every one of us, to try to better our lives and, and live a good, clean life. And this is what they say Arturo is doing. Well, let's see if anyone else will speak with us. Thank you. We're here in front of the Immigration Center uh, in Englewood, Colorado, and I have a young lady with me. What is your name? Karen Derrick Davis. Car Karen Derrick Davis. Karen, why are you here today? Because I think that Arturo has a right to stay here with his family. He has been here for years, paying taxes, being a positive influence on our um, community, and I don't think it makes sense to ask him to leave. Who is Arturo? Uh, Arturo is a gentleman who is uh, at, at risk of being deported, and he is in sanctuary at our church, First Unitarian. Um, we are hoping to um, get a stay of deportation and have his case reviewed and that they will allow him to stay under the new uh, action by Obama. What is life like as in the sanctuary process? If if a person goes into sanctuary, how is their life? Well, um, Arturo doesn't leave the church. Think of yourself being in a building without leaving for three months. Um, you know, we do our best to make it comfortable and to visit. And um, we have indoor soccer games to help him move around. But, um, you know, being in those four walls, I'm sure... It's, uh, he feels a little stir-crazy sometimes. A lot of people will look at you, you're not Latino, I presume. Right, I'm not. And say, why are you here? Because we've seen so many Latinos march and, and speak out as they should, but why, why you? Well, um, because someday it might be me <laughs> of some other issue. Um, I really believe in the... I think that you know our borders are man-made. They're all political, and I don't understand why someone cannot move here if they're going to be a productive member of our society. Um, I just don't understand why that's not okay. And um, so I have uh, sympathy for Arturo's situation, and you know want to speak out for others, not just on um, issues that directly affect me or that are part of my life. Well, I think that's very brave. What happens to Arturo's family if Arturo gets deported? I don't know. He's the primary breadwinner, and so I think they will have some really hard decisions to make about what then they will do as a family, whether they stay here or whether they go and join him in Mexico. I, yeah, I don't know if they have even thought that far. That would be a, a heartbreaking decision to make, wouldn't it? 
how do you think how do you think his children will feel growing up in a single parent household? Well, I don't know if they will, so I don't even want to speculate. If that happens, how? (laughs) Well, it'd be very painful. You know, I mean, a lot of kids grow up in in, um, broken homes, but uh, most of the time it's the parent's choice. And this would not be the parent's choice. This would be a broken home that, you know, the parents actually wanted to be together. So I think that would be a lot harder. This is kind of a hard question, but do you think that we are more secure with more broken homes? Or less secure. You mean in like in our tourist situation? As in national security. Is, is the nation more secure by dividing these families up, or is it less secure? Oh, just the fact of sending people back who supposedly shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with national security. I mean, if they want to. If that's the reason, then, you know, go after criminals, go after our homeland criminals. Um, I think going after people like Arturo is a waste of money and a waste of time and serves no purpose except to um, make relations maybe with Mexico worse Um, and definitely with a population of our, with a segment of our country um, doesn't, uh, doesn't engender good feelings there, so... So we should have a good relationship with Mexico, which is our our southern neighbor. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I I think we should, and I think these actions against Arturo alienate everyone else that's in his situation that has been a upstanding um, member of our society and um, been a positive, uh, productive member of our society, and uh, I think those are the kind of people that we want to support and um, keep and help them stay so looking into the camera Mm -hmm. what would you say to the person that's sitting at home saying well maybe i would get involved maybe not i would say that unless you are of native american descent you are an immigrant to this country and someone in your family has faced this situation so unless you're willing to go back and say that everyone who's not native is needing to leave, then um, I think you need to really look at why you are against this. Okay, thank you. And is there uh, an organization that people can become part of or uh, a website? Yes, um, and I don't know that exactly. There's a hashtag that is on these signs, hashtag Arturo... Pardon me? Keep Arturo. Ke- hashtag keep Arturo home. That would be the Twitter. Um, and I don't know the exact website, but there is a petition to sign, and you can look it up on Facebook. Okay, well, thank you for the interview. Thank you. So it kind of wraps our interviews for the moment. Uh, we're in front of ICE. Uh, we've heard several people talk. Some say that it's a, a fairness issue. Uh, some imagine what it would look like with Arturo without his family. Uh, or his family without our tour are trying to decide whether to stay in the U.S. or go back to uh, Mexico, and what life would look like if they were single-parent families. Also, we've talked about the security issue. Certainly, we're not becoming more secure by dividing families. Uh, the United States is only secure when everybody has an equal opportunity. So, my name is Tim Painter with Un Dia Sin Fronteras on 1150 AM radio, and we'll be talking to you soon.